Hello everybody, today I want to continue telling you about the engineering part of our Mars simulating project. Specifically about how we maintain pressure inside of our system. Pressure on Mars is very, very low compared to Earth. Uh, on Mars it's around 1,200 pascals, where on Earth is around uh, 60,000 pascals. But it's significantly smaller. Uh, on Mars, the average is around 600 pascals, but in some places where there's like deep craters, it can get up to 1,200 pascals. So for our project, we decided to use that number because it would allow us to have liquid water during certain parts of the day. Because on Mars, the pressure is around 1,200 pascals, um, if we look on this graph, which is the um, water graph, so here the blue area is solid, the yellow area is vapor, and the green area is liquid. So when we have uh, about 1,200 pascals, that would be right about there. So right above 1 kPa, so 1 kilopascal, so it would be like right about there, about halfway between those two marks. And if we go across, we see that that barely crosses over the green. Uh, on the other hand, if it was 600 pascals, it would be way below, and it would not cross the green line whatsoever. Or if it would, it would cross it just a tiny bit above the triple point. Uh, be, so, because the temperature on Mars also ranges from negative 70 degrees Celsius, so about here, to 20 degrees Celsius, about here, we have a, sh a short segment in the green area during the day, where liquid water actually exists in our simulator. Uh, during the night, when we add in the dry ice, the temperature drops drastically, and then we have solid water. So the reason that we chose 1,200 pascals versus 600 is because that allows liquid water to exist so at some points, so bacteria is able to grow. Because we decided that we wanted to keep a pressure of 1,200 pascals uh, in each of these individual jars, we needed some way to remove the current atmosphere, which is the Earth atmosphere, and lower the pressure down to such a low pressure so that we could accurately simulate Martian conditions. In order to do this, we used a vacuum pump, which is connected through rubber hosing into each of the individual containers. Uh, the vacuum pump itself can only be turned on or off. Uh, it cannot be turned on to a medium setting. Uh, if it's turned on, the pressure will drop way below the actual pressure that we need inside of our system. But if it's turned off, then the pressure will slowly rise because of all the connections that we have between the rubber hosing and the four ways, for example air will slowly leak into the system and the pressure will rise above the pressure that we need. Because of this, we need to cycle between turning off the pump and turning it on and keep the pressure within a certain range. And this is done by our code on the Arduino, which I'll explain in a later video. Furthermore, to keep air from leaking into the system, we have a valve which closes the vacuum pump from the rest of the system. This is a bit confusing, but what the valve allows us to do is prevent air from leaking through the pump and into the system. When the pump is turned on, everything is fine, the pressure decreases inside of the system, but when the pump is turned off, air can leak in through the pump and into the system. When, so when we turn off the pump, we also close this valve, and that prevents air from leaking in. Um, when we turn on and off the pump, and when we open and close the valve, all of that is regulated by Arduino, and I'll be explaining that in a later video. We also try to maintain the pressure by adding a lining on all of the metal connections. So you can see some of that white right there between the two brass uh, pieces. That also prevents air from leaking in to the joint. So on the other side of our system, opposite of the vacuum pump, we have two manometers. Uh, we bought these on eBay. Uh, they were used, obviously, so they were cheaper. But they're connected through the wall with this rubber hosing. Again, we have a metal clip which prevents air leakage, and they're connected into these two manometers. Uh, this one here is 100 torr, and this one here is 1,000 torr. So when the pressure is larger, we use the 1,000 torr one in the Arduino, so that gives us accurate results for larger, uh, larger uh, pressures. But then when we get to very, very low pressures, when it's almost a vacuum, we use the 100 torr one because that gives us more significant figures for smaller uh, smaller pressures. Uh, both of these are again connected into the Arduino, and that's how the Arduino decides when it needs to turn on the pump or turn it off. Another very port important part to maintain the, uh, the correct pressure inside of our system is correctly regulating the CO2 that comes into the system. So this is actually very pressurized CO2, so when it enters the system, if we were to just directly connect it, it would incre incredibly uh, shoot up the pressure. But it 
uh, what we have here is, again, we have a valve, which lets us turn on and off the actual CO2 that passes in. And we also have this, uh, this component right here. This limits how much CO2 can enter the system at any one point. So this allows the pressure to slowly go up when we actually open the CO2. That way we don't have very strong spikes in our actual pressure. Uh, over here, we can also see that we have the blue and the white, which are again linings which prevent air from leaking in uh, into the system. And this here, there's two connections which are again connected to the Arduino. Um, this one here opens up the valve and this one is for internal pressure. But I'll be explaining that in a later video. One problem that we encountered when we were trying to maintain the pressure is that each of these containers, as I explained before, has a little bit of water inside of them. And when we get to the Martian day inside of our simulator, the uh, because of the pressure, oh, there we go, uh, the water, uh, the temperature is right and the pressure is right, the water slowly evaporates and that adds water vapor into our artificial atmosphere. Uh, this does two things. First of all, it increases the pressure because we have more water in our atmosphere and water water vapor and second of all it damages the pumps so we have to replace the oil more often so we didn't really find a way to deal with it but we did minimize it in choosing the certain pressure and temperature that we did for our experiment since we selected uh, 1200 pascals which is uh, the pressure in some of the deeper craters on Mars and we selected the Martian summer temperature uh, on the triple point water graph this range is set up so that a very little of it actually is gaseous water. So we don't have as much gaseous water in our system at any time. On the opposite side of the spectrum, besides the warm temperatures, we have the cold temperatures. Uh, during the Martian night it gets to about negative 70 degrees Celsius. So the water that we have, the very little bit in all of these containers, freezes. Uh, at first the water freezes and it expands and for some, in some cases it actually broke our glass containers. So what that would do is that would allow more air from outside to leak in between the ice and the side of the container. So then we would have more air going into the atmosphere, uh, artificial atmosphere. Then when it gets even colder the ice would shrink back again and we'd have almost a full uh, earth atmosphere inside of our system. Uh, what this would cause is first the pump would be very overworked and would overheat and all of our organisms would now be living uh, in pretty much normal temperature. To deal with this problem, we first put insul insulation between individual glass containers so that they wouldn't individually make contact with the dry ice that we put into the container. Uh, we would first add insulation, so just ordinary styrofoam, between the containers so that they wouldn't hit each other during transportation and stuff like that. So they would become, uh, they would become fragile with small, um, tiny cracks in the glass. Uh, when we put in the dry ice, it would make direct contact with the glass, and that was part of the reason why they would shatter and they would become more fragile so that the, glass, uh, so that the freezing ice inside could actually break them apart. Uh, we also were more careful when we added the dry ice to make sure it wouldn't make direct contact. And Overall, this reduced the problem, but every once in a while, we would still have um, some of these glass containers break, but we would just replace them. Our artificial atmosphere was maintained at 1,200 pascals, but there was the Arduino and a lot of code behind the scenes which actually let this happen. Uh, I'll be explaining the code and uh, how this works in a later video, so stay tuned, and thank you for watching.